Hello, everyone. It's so good to see you for our last session of the workshop, which is quite a crazy statement here. Um, today, we'll be going over GitHub Classroom and teaching Safe with GitHub Classroom. Um, GitHub Classroom is a tool from our friends at GitHub Education that we started building some supports around. And as David has just said, you can do everything you need with the course using our own tool, Submit50, Code at Safe2.io, and so on. But if you're interested in doing something more advanced, having more flexibility, more autonomy, you can certainly use GitHub Classroom for that. And the plan for today will be to show you at a high level what is GitHub Classroom, and then going through a demo of how you could use GitHub Classroom. And Rongshun will help us see a student point of view using GitHub Classroom too. Uh, so GitHub Classroom is, again, based off of GitHub's infrastructure. And if you want to go see it, you can go to github.com or classroom.github.com to go ahead and see the home page for Classroom. You're welcome to follow along if you'd like. And it's important to know that all of what Classroom offers is really based on GitHub's infrastructure. So if you're familiar, for example, with having a, a notion of a classroom, we can think of that as simply backing up to a GitHub organization, where a GitHub organization is a collection of repositories. Now, these repositories in GitHub Classroom are really just assignments. Or again, a repository is some, like, some collection of code here. So every assignment in GitHub Classroom is really just a GitHub repository. To show you some visuals here, here's what our classroom looked like in fall 2021 where we had this organization called GitHub Classroom for CSFT. This is our classroom for the fall course. And inside that organization, we had several repositories, one for each assignment. And what students would do is they would go and accept that assignment and create their own repository, their own version of that assignment inside our organization. So a student might see something like this for an individual assignment. They would go ahead and see if they're working on DNA, the distribution code inside a repository that they could then clone for themselves and submit work to. So again, all of what we'll talk about today is based on GitHub's infrastructure using organizations and repositories. Now, GitHub Classroom offers some UI kind of overlays to this idea of organizations and repositories. If you were to log into Classroom and you were to make your own Classroom using their interface, you might see something like this. You would see a list of assignments that you have created, where each assignment is, again, just a template repository. And you can create that list of assignments to distribute to students based on those repositories here. So let's say I've made a birthdays assignment, a Caesar assignment, and a cache assignment. Each of those assignments comes with a single link that I can then share with my students, and they can then use that link to clone that template repository, make their own changes, and submit that work back to me. So for example, a student might say something like this. If I send them a link, they would see accept this assignment, DNA. And once they do, they'll be able to see their own repository inside my classroom organization that they can, again, submit work to. As they work on that assignment, they're able to run what we call an action workflow. In this case, we can talk about that as auto grading. This action workflow runs Check50 for us and gives a student back a score that I can then see in my own classroom. So let's say a student worked on DNA. They could do an automated commit, and they could then see that action workflow run and see how many tests in Check50 they have passed. And then later on, if I want as a teacher to leave feedback on their work, I could use GitHub's pull requests feature to leave a comment on their work in this repository. So if you're familiar with PRs, I could go ahead and leave a comment like this saying, very nicely done for their work on a certain assignment using the pull request feature in GitHub. And once I do that, let's say I have a whole collection of students whose work I want to see, I can go to GitHub Classroom's interface and see all of their scores in one place. Get out of the way here a little bit. You can see I have Hermione, Harry, and Ron, who've all submitted work to me. And I can see how many tests they've passed. Hermione has 21 out of 21. Harry has 1 out of 21. And if I wanted to, I could download their grades using a CSV file here. I could also download all their submissions in a single zip file using the download repositories feature here. So this is what GitHub Classroom offers us. It offers us a chance to create our own assignments, to distribute them with template repositories, to have students have their own space in which to work on them, and to submit that work back to us so we can leave feedback and see their grades. So let's actually dive into how we could do a demo of this and seeing how we build our own GitHub Classroom. So I will go over to classroom.github.com, and the link is in the chat here. And the first thing you need to do is sign in with your GitHub account. So I'll go ahead and sign in here. And once I do that, I should see I already have a classroom open. But if you'd like to make your own, all you have to do is click on this new classroom button up here. And notice you'll be prompted to select an organization for your new classroom. So again, GitHub Classroom is based on GitHub's already existing infrastructure around organizations. So you'll first make a new organization, and you'll then tie that organization to your GitHub Classroom. So I have already done this. But if you want to, you can go ahead and create an organization. And once you do, you'll be able to create a classroom to go along with it. The steps here are simply to create that organization, name it, uh, type in your email, save it, 
and then go ahead and give your classroom a name. In my case, if I go back here, I decided to call mine Carter's Demo Classroom. So once you have that, you can click on this demo here, and you'll notice that we have some assignments. I've already created these assignments, but you can also create your own using this new assignment button here. So I can go ahead and create a new assignment, and let's say I have a template repository that I put some distribution code into, and I want to share that with my students. So I'll hit new assignment, and I'll first give the assignment a name. In this case, let's say I'm a teacher, and I want to distribute CS50's cash problem from this most recent fall. So what I could do is I could say, I want to search for, well, actually, I want to give it a name first. I'll type in cash here. And I'll say, this is an individual assignment. I could optionally give this assignment a deadline, um, but just noted that in GitHub Classroom, once the deadline has passed, your students can't submit work to that assignment. So we tend to leave deadlines blank just so we can implement our own lateness checks here. I'll keep the repository visibility private because I only want students themselves to see their own repository, and we don't tend to grant students admin access to their repository. They tend not to need it. So we'll leave this blank, and we'll hit continue here. And what I can then do is choose some starter code for the student to use. So at this point, I'd like to show you our own um, kind of infrastructure for GitHub Classroom, which is called Classroom 50. And you're welcome to use this as you use GitHub Classroom. To see this, I can go to github.com slash classroom50. And you'll see that we've put together a collection of template repositories full of CSRT distribution code for your students to use here. So you could choose any of these template repositories and distribute them using GitHub Classroom for your students. So notice how I wanted to use the cache repository here. Well, I have a public template, which means I can use this as the basis for this assignment, and I can share this with my own students. So in GitHub Classroom, I'll say, select a repository. Well, I want to use the 2022 fall cache repository in Classroom 50. So I'll then go ahead and use Classroom 50 slash 2022 dash fall slash dash cache. And I'll see the repository come up here. So I can select it. And now it is the basis for this assignment. I can hit continue. And now I'll be prompted to set up auto grading and feedback. We have done most of this for you. There's no need to add auto rating tests. We've already added those uh, through our template repositories using Check50. We can also enable feedback pull requests, this feature we saw earlier, where I can leave comments on student work via a GitHub Classroom's PR feature or pull request feature. So I'll check that, and I'll create this new assignment. I'll give it a moment to load. And now I notice I can see how many students have done this assignment so far. Currently, it's none, but in a moment, it'll just be Rungshin. So when I get this link here, I can use to share with Rongxin to accept this assignment. And let me go ahead and share that with Rongxin now. And in a moment, we'll see how Rongxin walks through working on this assignment as a student. Can everyone see my screen? I think we can. All right. So I just got the invite link that's sent by Carter. It looks like this. So I'm just going to visit it. And I'm being greeted by this accept the assignment screen. So what I can do is I can just click accept this assignment. So what GitHub is doing right now is trying to create an assignment repository for this particular problem set and under Carter's uh, classroom organization. So I will just probably just refresh this page and it's done. I can just click on this GitHub link. It will bring me to the assignment repository. So right now, as you can see, I'm now inside the assignment repository and I will be able to dive right in by create a GitHub code space on it. So I'll just click create code space on main. It will just spin up a code space uh, for this assignment repository. And then back over to Carter for now. Yeah, so while Rongxin's code space boots, I want to show you just a brief resource we've created for you here. I can share my screen here. Um, we've created a resource for you to learn how to make your own custom assignments using GitHub Classroom, and specifically their template repository feature. So if I click on this, I should be brought to a link that shows me how to go through GitHub Classroom and create my own assignments using GitHub Classroom. Um, this is a step-by-step -step walkthrough for you to use. And certainly don't feel tied to our own assignments. You're welcome to modify them as you see fit. Um, we'll find a more long-term home for this in the future, most likely in our own official documentation. But for now, we'll have it in Notion here. Um, and again, this just walks you through creating a blank template repository, if you're unfamiliar with that. Going ahead and adding distribution code to it and giving it a name. And also, you are welcome to use our own GitHub Action configurations to reuse 
auto grading using your own check 50 checks. So notice here, for example, you might modify the name of your checks. Here I've called mine Mario less tests if I'm making this Mario less distribution code. But I could also supply a check 50 args. I could say I want to use a certain check 50 slug, maybe it's one I've made myself, and putting that in here will allow me to run check 50 as a student submits work, as we'll see Rong Shin do in just a moment. And this is all configurable using this main.yaml inside the template repository, which again, this documentation runs you through. At the very end, you should have a repository that looks a bit like this. And Rong Shin, are you ready to show us the student view? Okay, just one moment. My code space is putting up, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, um, the first time student launching the code space, it takes time to pull the image and extract the image. So. And also, just to give you a, a more long tour of GitHub Classroom, uh, we can go to Classroom 50 here, and we can see a few other repositories that we have. Um, so currently, what we've done is we've added all of the assignments from 2021 fall, but it's our goal to update these as we go through and update CSGT's own assignments. So we've called them 2022 fall to symbolize that these will be the ones in use for teachers this next fall. But as we have the course this coming fall, we'll update those for the next year ahead. Rong Shin has already accepted my assignment. So here I have this uh, student named Rong Shin Liu test. And I can see that at the moment, Rong Shin's latest submission doesn't quite pass all of the checks, but maybe eventually they will. And I can go over here and I could download a CSV of all the grades for my students so far. I got here simply by going to my classroom, clicking on the assignment I distributed to Rong Shin. In this case, it was cash. And then I can see all the students who have accepted this assignment, as well as all these submissions to this assignment so far. So I'm ready to reshare my screen. Uh, so right now I'm in CodeSpace again, but for this particular assignment only. So as you can see, I am now uh, open a cache.c file, which is the distribution code from the template repository. Um, my goal is to finish this assignment, of course, but right now for the demo purposes, I won't be implementing all of them. Uh, I will just quickly maybe finish this one, but doing it incorrectly. Um, so let's say I finish this particular function. I just want to submit it. Right now, what I can do is just quickly make a push and type in this. This is my submission. And I will just quickly make a push. Think chain. <clears throat> so what it does is actually push the changes I made for this assignment back to this assignment repository. And as you can see, it will just trigger the action workflow, which is run the auto grader. And again, this is my submission that I just made. If I click on it, you, you can see that the auto grading is running. Um, it takes time to run the auto grading. Again, it's pulling one of those um, code space image that we defined so that we are running the check at the exact same, same environment as if students are uh, working on their problem set. So what this auto grading does is actually it pulls the base image that code space is running, but then you run chat 50 on top of it. Um, and this is essentially what it's doing right now. And once the chat 50 check uh, finished running, it will just render the output uh, to GitHub Classroom. And GitHub Classroom will be able to, and Carter will be able to see uh, what my grades are for this submission, for this particular submission. Yeah, Rong Shen, and while this runs, do you mind if I show what the looks like on my end? Sounds good. So here I am back in my assignment for cash. I see Rong Shin has accepted this assignment and is presently working on it. What I could do is I could click on this commit button here to see Rong Shin's updates to this assignment. So I'll click on this commit and I'll see that Rong Shin has indeed one uh, attempt at this problem so far. I could also go to Rong Shin's repository here. I could say cache Rong Shin Lu test. And so I could see all of Rong Shin's progress simply by clicking on his assignment here. And now I can see that he's indeed returned since over 250. Now, if I wanted to leave Rong Shin some feedback, what I could do is simply click on the pull requests tab and go to this feedback pull request. By clicking on this and choosing files changed, I can see the updates Rong Shin has made. So I can see that he modified particularly this line here, 47. And to leave a comment, I can use the very same GitHub UI. I could click on this and I could say, maybe uh, think about how this math will work out. Uh, try thinking of an example with 25 cents. Do you get back one 
reporter. So I could leave that comment, and I could add a single comment. And now, the next time Rong Xun goes to that feedback PR, he'll be able to see that comment on his own work. And once Rong Xun's tests have finished, I should be able to see an updated score for Rong Xun, which in the end will probably still be this number of checks out of 14. So I won't see too many changes here, but Rong Xun is yours finished running in a way that we can see it. Sure, let me reshare my screen. So right now, by the way, I can see Carter's comment now, and I can reply to it, but not right now. Um, since I did not correctly solve the problem set, of course, I failed the auto grading, but then I will be able to click on it and see what check I'm failing. This is all the check 50 checks we already re we already implemented, but this is now rendering uh, on GitHub's action workflow. So as you can see, it tells me I did not return integer for number of cents. I did not correctly reject negative input, that kind of thing. So I will be able to get feedback from this auto for, for, from this uh, action workflow result and for this particular submission. I can keep resubmitting until I probably you know, solve the problem, but this is the student, this is the feedback that student would get from this auto grader. And I was awarded uh, two out of 14 points, probably because some of the uh, Boyle codes, uh, probably because my cache compiles and so I passed all those checks, but I did not pass the remaining checks. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Rangshin. So that is the student view of things. And to close us out, um, just to make sure you have access to all the features that GitHub Classroom offers, I'd encourage you to go to, if you're in GitHub Classroom, go to the Settings tab over here, and you should see an option to verify your status as a teacher. So through GitHub's Global Education Campus, you're able to receive the code spaces feature for your own students. If you click Get Verified here, you can go through GitHub's process to receive the features that Rangshin and I have just gone through here. Um, but overall, this was our tour of GitHub Classroom. Again, all of our tools we've previously seen so far, code, CFTIO, Submit50, Check50, and so on, you can all use with teaching your CFT Classroom. But if you'd like more autonomy, more flexibility, and so on, GitHub Classroom is one option for you. So I just want to show this to you all today. And we'll pause here and take a few questions.